The Texas Chainsaw Massacre is in 3D, right? Hey everyone, it's Movie Lover 120 here, and I am here with a brand new movie review. And this movie review is going to be for the seventh installment of a horror franchise I am currently reviewing. And that is down to the very last two films of this franchise I have to get through. And that is, of course, going to be for none other than what came around the first installment of this franchise to be released in the 2010s. As, of course, none other and Texas Chainsaw 3D, which is advertised, like this upcoming movie we're getting, as a direct sequel to the original 1974 movie. Or first attempt at a direct sequel to the original 1974 movie. Ignoring Texas Chainsaw Part 2, ignoring Leatherface Texas Chainsaw 3, and ignoring Texas Chainsaw The Next Generation. And ignoring the remake films. Which I will give a hint, are better than this. But anyway, the point is, before, like, and as you can see by my 3D glasses, this movie was in 3D, it was released as Texas Chainsaw 3D, instead of just Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3D. Once it hit DVD, they took out the 3D, and the movie was just called Texas Chainsaw. Yep. They only advertise it on DVD as Texas Chainsaw. No Massacre. Or no the at the beginning. Just Texas Chainsaw. Lame. Like what's next? A child's play movie called Childs? Or or an Arnold Street or Friday the 13th movie both called A Nightmare On? Or just A Nightmare? Or Friday The? Or how about a Hellraiser movie called just Hell? <laughs> what else can I think of? Uh, yeah, I think, I think that's all I can think of. Just, are those going to be next? <laughs> the, the point is, um, let's get out with the plot of this movie, and then how the movie was made. Decades ago, residents of Newt, Texas, long suspected that the Sawyer family was responsible for the disappearances of many people. When their suspicions finally were confirmed, vigilantes torched the Sawyer compound and killed every member of the family, or so they thought. Much later, a young woman named Heather learns that she has inherited Texas property from an unknown relative, and she is unaware of horrors that await in the mansion's dark cellar. Or dank cellar. So yeah. So how was the movie made? In January 2007, Platinum Dunes executives, aka the studio that made the remake duology, Bradley Fuller and Andrew Form, stated that the company would not be producing a third film in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre reboot franchise. So that franchise was so that reboot series was shut down. In October 2009, it was announced that Twisted Pictures, behind the Saw franchise, and Lionsgate Films, also behind the Saw franchise, were attempting to purchase the rights of the franchise from New Line Cinema, with Twisted Pictures producing and Lionsgate distributing. According to Variety buyer Michael Fleming, the plan was to create a contemporary film in 3D, with Steven Sisko writing the script. The contract with rights holders Bob Curran and Kim Henkel would be for multiple films. In May 2011, Lionsgate announced it would be partnering with New Image to produce a new Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and that John Lusen would direct the film. Mazon C. would act as producer, with production having been set to begin in June 2011. Mazon also announced that the story would pick up where Toe Pooper's original film ends. Anna Marcus and Deborah Sullivan were bought in to write the script. Chris... Kristen Elms and Fluent Shop worked on rewrites and script polishing, 
and neither Twisted Pictures nor New Image had a credit on the finished film, which had to be recut before release, as it received an NC-17 rating due to the excessive gore, even though the film is not really that graphic, during its initial submission to the MPA. Ouch. So guys, this was my first time watching this movie. And especially after how pissed I was while sitting through the next generation, I also have heard so many negative stuff about this film. But I was hoping that, in my opinion, it would be a decent improvement over the next generation. And was it, you may ask? Well, mine, minorly? But it was still a pile of crap in every way. The 3D effects suck much like most 3D horror films, and the fact they had that they have this take place in the 2010s instead of the 70s, except for the opening scene, does not work for me. Speaking of that, the movie actually does... So, what this difference is, unlike most of the Texas Chainsaw sequels, this one does start off pretty good, but it, for the rest of the movie, just sucks ass. Yeah, it really goes downhill quick afterwards. Anyway, let's get on with the bad qualities. Alright, the bad qualities are, for example, most of the time, the film relies on just cheap jump scares from Leatherface, and there are some scenes in the film where the Leatherface jump scares have a random pig squealing sound. There are some several characters that are significantly miscast in the movie, like Bill Mosley plays Drayton Sawyer in this in this film who looks nothing like Jim Sleto, the original Drayton Sawyer. However, I will say it was good to see Bill Mosley in another Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie again after his role is chopped off in part two. Although, I wish they kind of did bring back Chop Chop for this movie, even if part two is not canon in this film. Alexandria did. The diary was also not fit to play Heather Miller, who was a baby during the events of the first film, which would, like, make her 40 years old during the present time of the movie. Like, come on. But she looks, acts, and behaves like a woman in her mid-twenties. Like, if as, if she's in her mid-twenties, then shouldn't this movie be set in the 90s instead, not the 2010s? Not only that, it even steals elements from way better horror films. It steals elements from Saw, it steals elements from The Devil's Rejects, it steals elements from Freddy vs. Jason. And those are all better than this movie. Way better. The film even lacks most of the suspenseful intense move in the first, and to an extent the part two, and the remake duology. Some absolutely horrendous lighting in some scenes, which isn't helped by most of the movie taking place at night. There's, there's even numerous plot holes, too. Like, how was Leatherface able to escape the fire from the opening scene almost completely unharmed? That makes no sense. There's terrible, lazy, and ugly looking cinematography, too. There's poor direction from John Lushanop. Most of, because like most of the film feels like it was directed like a straight to video or made for television movie. So, and also, many characters are one dimensional and stereotypical, especially Heather and her friends, or the typical horror movie characters who like to party and drink. Almost, almost all the victims in this movie are pretty much their typical slasher characters. So, yeah. Also, during the carnival scene, there was this unneeded cameo reference to Jigsaw from the Saw films because, well, this movie's made by Lionsgate, so of course that was going to be in there, but the carnival scene, I will move actually was pretty cool. Like, I kind of wish the carnival scene were the plot of this movie. Like, a plot of a movie having Leatherface terrorize a bunch of carnival goers, that would be a pretty badass sequel. Gotta say, now, that, now if, if just Leatherface at a carnival were the whole movie, I would go see that. For sure. Because that seems like a terrific concept. It feels completely unnecessary to continue the story from the 1974 film and to add in more Sawyer family members. But I will say the opening scene was the best, probably the best scene in the movie. But back to this review. A few of the death scenes look incredibly cheesy, like Bert Hartman's death, where you can obviously tell that the blood is CGI when he's shredded. And a few continuing errors, like like how the sheriff of Newt's name was said to be Jesus Mel 
not John Lowe, in the 1974 film, but here his name is Hooper. Like Tobe Hooper, the director of the original movie. And almost all the characters are plainly unlikable, like Darl, a hitchhiking man who's revealed to be a thief, or Mayor Burt Hartman, the man behind the killing of the Sawyer family. And it's extremely hard to side with any character in this film, because the Sawyers are still murderers, but the film tries to paint them as sympathetic, and people who kill the Sawyers are trying to be labeled heroes, but they just come off as unlikable. Some pointless plot twists, like how Officer Cart Hartman turned out to be Mayor Burt's son, but both the villains and the supposed heroes in the movie are really hard to side with, like I've already said. And some of the dialogue is cringeworthy, like how Heather throws Leatherface's chainsaw and says, Do your thing, cuz. Oh my god. That is such a cringy ass line. Too many pointless and boring subplots that go nowhere, other than to pad out the film's runtime. Speaking of that, um, Leatherface is kind of uncharacteristic in this because. For most of the movie, he does try to kill his cuz, but then later, he saves his cuz, and and his cuz helps Leatherface kill off the people who tried to kill her. So in a way, this movie tries to go like, kind of like what they did with the Predator in Alien vs. Predator, where the Predator helped the human being. Or like, like what Rob Zombie did with Michael Myers in his remakes, where instead of trying to kill his sister... He tried to reunite with his sister and tried to find his sister and tried to get her to know that he was his brother. Even if it came off wrong, which is uncharacteristic of both those characters. The real Leatherface would have killed her anyway. Leatherface is not sympathetic. Yeah. And, alright, and also, poor writing from Adam Marcus, who directed the infamous Final installment of the Friday 13th films, which was Jason Goes to Hell. Not Jason X, guys. Not that one. Not Jason Takes Manhattan. Jason Goes to Hell. That one. Although, if I'm going to be honest, I would rather watch that movie over this. Because cause I'm not going to lie. Because at least Jason Goes to Hell has some fun moments and actually has some great gory kills. Even if it's one of the weakest Friday 13th films, it's actually still kind of fun to watch. I like this. However... The reason there are some good qualities I have with this film, unlike the next generation, those would be like good qualities like we do get some of the cast members from the original 1974 movie return to play the roles in this film, such as Marilyn Burns, John Duggan, and even Gunnar Hansen, and this would be Gunnar Hansen's last on screen performance before he would sadly pass away, who was known for playing the original Leatherface in the nineteen seventy four movie. And a few of the death and birth scenes can be pretty gruesome and terrifying, and Leatherface mask design in this movie is actually pretty unsettling and creepy, I will admit that. And one of the very few films in the franchise to not have any continuity errors, like the film opens just after the events of the original, I think exactly the same as it, as it when it ended. And it uses, in one moment it even uses the iconic camera noise, and the acting can be pretty alright, like Dan Yeager's portrayal of Leatherface and Bill, and Despite being miscast, mostly does a pretty decent job as Drayton Sawyer, even if he looks nothing like Jim Sl Sludlow. And a couple of throwbacks to the film's 19 1974 press processor, like Letterface, like on door slam sequence, and so yeah. And also the carnival sequence. The carnival sequence is pretty cool. I will admit that. When Letterface starts chasing the carnival goers so he can get to his cousin, and yeah, that was actually pretty badass. So yeah. Other than that, this is the second worst TCM movie yet. But here's what needs to happen. With like, because I did like the opening scene of this movie, I hope someone makes like a fan edit where you take the ending shot of the first film with Lurphy swinging his chainsaw around and after that shot closes, have like a text that says like sometime later or a few days later or however long it's been since after that or maybe like a few hours later or something and add in the beginning shot at the Sawyer house and that's the real ending of the first film. The real end of the first film is the beginning of Texas Chainsaw 3D. Yeah, delete the rest of Texas Chainsaw 3D, just keep the opening scene. The people of New Texas, they find out about the Sawyers, they go to their house, they burn down the Sawyer house, they successfully kill the Sawyer family and their legacy, while Leatherface escapes and then disappears into the force. The end. There's no, like, 2013 crap, he doesn't find some cousin, there's no... They don't find this mom or baby, they don't kidnap the baby, and... Yeah, he'll... Or especially doesn't try to go save his cousin and then get beat up 
and <laughs> get beat up by a bunch of angry mob spectators and stuff. Like, yeah, there's none of that in there. It just ends with the house burning down and Letterface just mysteriously disappearing. And all that other stupid crap. So, yeah. But other than the opening scene, I would avoid this one like the other sequels after 2. And that's it for my review of Texas Chainsaw 3D, or Texas Chainsaw, as it's as apparently DVD likes to call it. So here's how I'm going to rank this movie. I'm going to give Texas Chainsaw 3D a 4 out of 10. There we go. That's it for my review of Texas Chainsaw 3D. Now I just have to get through Leatherface 2017, which I will watch tonight. So I can't wait for that. To get, I mean, no, not can't wait to watch that movie. I can't wait to get that review out of the way and can finally finish this series until that 2022 movie comes to Netflix. Which I, no, I'm, I'm not going to say it at this rate, but anyway, that'll be it for this video. Thank y'all for watching. And if you like this and want to see more, and don't forget to like, subscribe to Movie Lover 120.